friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Agile Technical Tester. We are in Chapter 1 Requirements Engineering and continuing with the next topic of the first section that is 1.1.2 Identifying Acceptance Criteria Using Requirements Engineering and Test Techniques. So here we are trying to understand that what kind of techniques can be really helpful for us to derive the acceptance criteria and nourish them well which would be helpful at the end of the day to make sure that we deliver a quality product by each sprint by sprint. To begin with, the very first thing is to understand what requirement engineering is a process and what kind of process consists of generally in different simple steps. So the journey begins with elicitation. Elicitation is basically a process of discovering, understanding, documenting and reviewing the user needs and constraints from the system. It's more about like, you know, uh, having a kind of, you know, discussion with respect to the user story provided to you and trying to derive as many outcomes as possible and generally determining that on what grounds this particular user story will be marked complete or done and uh, what areas will be requiring our attention to work from the point of development or testing and if there are any such thing which are missing can also be reviewed here and could be shared back to the product owner to get the necessary information to support your you know findings and close them so elicitation is the very first thing which you start with your stakeholders together to analyze and understand or review the requirements or user stories and then derive as an outcome the acceptance criteria from that documentation is the second way to do that where generally like you know move from elicitation following that you get into the documentation but first and foremost thing when you talk about agile the documentation depends on what kind of approach you are following so agile can also have certain set of documentation minimal or you know heavy documentation itself like some point of time so when we say a uh, minimal or heavy documentation it means that whether the documents what you're preparing is going to be very brief just like one liners or a statements form or maybe a paragraph form where paragraphs would have these stories or details about the different functionalities of one particular task or one particular feature in the application and probably may have more details with respect to that. So we generally stick to those uh, queries and see that how these principles of the Agile Manifesto can be met and the acceptance criteria can be well formed so that the other stakeholders can understand it or refer it whenever required to meet the expectations of the product. The next thing is when we continue after that is negotiation and validation where different stakeholders uh, discuss together that how many story points are required for this or how many hours are required to do this job and what kind of uh, steps need to be taken, what kind of approach to be used. So we internally have certain negotiation and validation of these acceptance criteria. Whether this acceptance criteria can be met, how long will it be requiring to meet that, what kind of efforts are required, what criticality is involved, whether a particular identified risk is a highly severe risk or less severe risk. So all these things will be discussed following the uh, you know, documentation and then we start talking about that in more depth so that everything is quite clear to everyone. Following that, of course, management is the equally important part of the entire process. That is, whatever you have created, whatever you have discussed, should be well managed and it should be, as we progress, everything must be managed in such a way that it can be referred at any point of time. So here, as the project progress, opinions and circumstances might change. So even though acceptance criteria were properly elicited, documented, negotiated and validated, acceptance criteria are still subjected to change because as you progress probably you find a new piece of information or you find a new criticality which may require additional efforts required to be done at that point of time so it should be well managed in terms of configuration management where like versioning can be done and you manage that how many histories have been uh, revised so far and in continuation ahead, we do have different, uh, you know, uh, elicitation techniques. So here we are trying to elaborate 
elicitation process in more detail and understand that what different techniques can be used to uh, apply during the elicitation of the user stories and then determine the acceptance criteria for that. So we have three of them here, that is quantitative questionnaires, qualitative questionnaires, and qualitative interview. The first one is quantitative questionnaires, which deals generally with the count, the numbers. So here we define that how many number of hours are required to do that job, how many test cases would be enough. So we gen generally when you put down or cull down the number of count or count of any effort which is required to be put during that particular activity is what you call it as quantitative questionnaires. That you say how many, question how many test cases would be required to achieve this functionality validation how many test automation scripts would be required to do this job how many man hours are required to do this job what kind of you know number of days are required to follow in the sprint so whenever you talk from the point of quantity it goes into the quantitative questionnaire so the entire list will have certain questions which answers all those numbers which are required to be followed the second thing is about qualitative questionnaire which actually defines the quality of or quality of each quantitative question answers. So in the previous approach, you would have find different figures. Now you're trying to enhance the quality of that, that how this is going to be applied in real time. We found that 50 test cases would be enough for this, but what kind of test data, what kind of approach, what kind of risk analysis you're going to apply to that, how these 50 test cases will be so much sufficient that we do not need any additional test cases to validate any remaining functionality or so on. So that's the most important part of it when you talk about qualitative questionnaires. So again, it will consist of several questions to be answered at that point of time. Qualitative interview is about like uh, more flexible than quantitative query and is mainly used to acquire information about backgrounds, context, and causes. So this interview can basically happen between the product owner and the development team or it can also happen between the development team or testing team or just like generally different stakeholders and to understand from business users or probably the end users and see that what is that we can add more to define the acceptance criteria. Because acceptance criteria is that core element of a uh, user story which finally concludes that if this acceptance criteria is met that means this user story is complete or this particular task is complete. So acceptance criteria has to be given that particular value while preparation so that tomorrow after spending maybe 10 or 15 days in a sprint, you do not say that, okay, come on, this acceptance criteria cannot be met at all. So that's more important and we put a lot of efforts with respect to different techniques and different approaches when talking about uh, designing or defining the acceptance criteria for different user stories. Coming up further is also to add on some more techniques not limited to the what you saw here now. We do have different things like uh, there are other techniques like creative techniques like thinking hats. We have six thinking hats, another technique which we are not going to talk about as a part of the syllabus. And supporting techniques like lo-fi prototyping. So if you are practicing in your organization, you would better understand that what these techniques are if you have been using them. Plus, you have learned from the foundation that is, there's a technique called as invest and smart invest, which can be also used in addition with the test techniques such as equivalence partitioning, boundary value analysis, decision table, or statement transition, state transition testing. So it's just not limited to what we are looking at right now. The Agile approach is flexible to any other traditional techniques as well to be applied here, but we are just talking about requirement elicitation here and different approaches to be followed in that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to let me know. I'll be here to address your queries by looking at your comments. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. I'll be getting back to you with the next tutorial. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.